Well, I think this could be a short one this week. Welcome to this week's Table Talk. Hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff. Uh, my name is Jason and this is Table Talk. So if you're one of my new subscribers, a big welcome. Um, Table Talk is something we do every week and we just summarise what's been going on during the week. We talk about what happened um, over the week, what's coming up next week, sometimes longer term plans and all sorts of bits and pieces. And you get some sneak peeks into the build progress uh, of various projects as we go as well. Um, and I talk about all sorts of other plans so yeah it feels like not much happened this week but um, uh, I suppose one way or another stuff did so um, shall we start with what happened last week well we started the week looking at this this is the second airbrush I've reviewed um, from gallery and it's the Mobius 0 0.3 and uh, subsequently, I've used it since I filmed that um, for doing my B17 build, and it is lovely. It is really, really nice. Um, yeah, I, I haven't had any issues. It's a dream to clean up. It's really nice, and something that I've noticed that um, I didn't spot when I was filming the um, the first uh, the sort of the tool review. It's, you see the see the little flat there. And we've got one on the other side. That's where, when you're using the airbrush, your thumb goes, yeah? Um, and actually, it makes a bit of a difference because when you've got your thumb on a circular surface, you're putting pressure on it to grip. But because of the flat, you can actually hold the airbrush more lightly. It's a bit more comfortable. I've never seen that on any other airbrush. So, yeah, it's another innovation that I didn't spot. I've been really enjoying working with both the airbrushes. Clearly, this is a more refined one than the entry level one, as you'd expect. Um, but yeah, so for those of you who might have been waiting for me to test it and have a play, it's lovely. I haven't had a play yet with the swan tail, um, but this is lovely. Now, if you're interested in this, um, I will put a link to their website in the bottom of this video and also um, the discount code. So as a subscriber to Model Kit Stuff, you can get 10% off uh, all gallery pro uh, products at the checkout. So, so if you're getting um, uh, a sale item, you still get 10% off that as well. And I believe it applies to absolutely everything on, on their web shop. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, it's a great deal. It's a great deal. It's a great deal at full RRP, to be honest. Um, but it's a lovely brush, and I'm enjoying working with it. Um, yeah, um, whether we'll come up with problems over time, I don't know. One or two people have suggested I might, but they also appear to be people that don't have the airbrush. Um, one person was quite critical of my uh, video saying, there is no way you could compare it to the Infinity. And yet I did a whole video where I did, so clearly you can. So I'm not even sure he watched the video. Uh, some people have a tendency to watch a, a couple of minutes and then go, uh, and then put a comment down. I know this because sometimes you get comments before the video's um, finished. So if it's a 20 minute video and um, uh, it's only been up for 10 minutes, you can't have watched the whole video. Um, so yeah, um, but in the main, there's a lot of comment commentary from people who've already got this, already using it and saying that they love it too. So that was Monday. Um, and if you are interested, like I say, you can get 10% off. Use my link to get to the web store. Um, that does two things. Um, it ensures you're getting uh, the, the latest deals, those prices on their website, generally better than you'll get anywhere else, better than Amazon. Amazon's getting expensive these days, I don't know if you've noticed. Um, but also what it will do um, is it gives a count to Gallery and they know how many people are coming to the website through my uh, through my web link. Um, so it gives them an understanding of 
uh, the impact my video is having on creating interest and that will then give them um, incite them to think about giving me more products um, to review so that's great for you guys because I can then get to grips with them and and tell you what I think um, before you spend money on them so it's a it, it's a positive all around if you use the link um, and then use my discount code and get the 10% off so yeah there you have it really happy with that um, I've got the uh, swallowtail to play with and I have some good news on the Sean horse, which will feed into the swallowtail, um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So Monday's video, that was that. Um, then Tuesday, we had the next Endeavor. Now I'm realigning the, the Endeavor videos so that we have an Endeavor video one week um, and don't have um, a B17 update on a Sunday. And then the following week, we won't have Endeavor, but we'll have a B17 update. It just takes the pressure off my um, editing time. So I was going peaks and troughs, and it just flat, flattens it out a little bit. Um, so uh, that's helpful. So uh, that's why you've had Endeavors back to back. Um, and we carry on with building the, um, the um, cabin. Um, and then uh, for, for me, I um, I didn't do any this week, this weekend just gone um, because um, I had some things to do on the Saturday, unfortunately, um, but I'm still ahead of where you are. Um, after that, it's skylights and um, I've just done both the skylights. So I think this Saturday when I come to work on Endeavour, it's... Um, deck railings that I'm doing which will be interesting okay and then Wednesday we had the vintage uh, figures from Airfix which um, lots of people were commenting on um, quite quite a divide on the figures some people uh, reminiscing about them uh, other people um, saying they'd never touched them uh, but the general consensus was that uh, we'd, we'd like to see them in a different plastic. Uh, so I don't know whether they use that softer plastic um, because they think kids might play with them and, and it's not, not as brittle or as sharp or as dangerous. Because um, I imagine that's why they use that softer plastic in uh, for, for toy soldiers, for kids. So that, you know... Um, uh, pointy bits would bend rather than snap off and become a choking hazard but you don't need to do that on modeling products um, you know you just put an age on them and and say right you know it's it's only safe if you're above the age of eight like they do on everything else that's air fixes common common age so I, I don't see why they still need to be in that softer pl plastic um, if you look at the comments on that video, someone's explained very clearly uh, what, what the difference is. Um, but yeah, I, I suspect it's that. I suspect it was originally done for a, from a safety point of view uh, so that kids could play with it. But if you step back and do that as a vintage classic now, I think it would benefit from being in a harder plastic. And everyone seemed to be saying that same thing. One or two people concerned about the scale. Well, I always thought they were a bit overscale for 176. If you think about, you think about um, Hornby figures, double uh, O gauge figures, which is roughly 76. I know it's not, not precise. Um, but they're, they're smaller than those figures, so I, and I know that some old Airfix 176 stuff in uh, has been re-released in the past as 172, so therefore a little bit interchangeable. Um, uh, and certainly one or two of those guys seem quite chunky, and, and that's quite commonly an issue with 172 figures is I find that they're a bit a bit chunky sometimes and a bit oversized. So I didn't think they were too bad, but they would definitely, definitely benefit from different plastic because they're, they're not the easiest things to work with in that soft plastic. Um, so yeah, that is what we did last week. And then on Friday, we yes, which was last night, I'm trying to think because um, I'm actually recording this Thursday lunchtime. So I'm trying to think where what we're listening to, what we're watching Friday. And it's not coming to mind, so I'll have to Sean switch. Horse. Eight you watched last night, of course I knew that. Um, so yeah, 
Um, I think that leads nicely into talking about the Sean Horst. Um, so Sean Horst was my model build last week. I'm back on B17 this weekend. Um, like I say, I didn't do anything with it on the on the Saturday. So this is purely um, Sunday's work. And what I managed to do was finish putting on all the wriggles. Um, I'll take a little photograph so you can see close up in a sec. Um, and I've put the rivets on and I've put the weld lines on. So this whole side of the hull now is finished other than a couple of scratch made um, eye, um, eye points for remounting um, propellers on the back. So uh, I've got that to do. And then I've got to flip it over and I've got to do about half, maybe two thirds of the hull wriggles. Um, and do the welding and riveting on, on that side as well. Oh, beg your pardon, I've got some rivets to add on the stern here. I've done them on the other side, but I've got the stern to do. So um, next time I come to do this, um, I should be able to get the Sean horse in to a position where we're ready for prime. That's important because the uh, swallowtail is going to get... Um, get its outing on the hull so we'll be using primers with it and we'll be painting the hull with it so the swallowtail being the the, the trigger one now uh, one or two of you have already commented that you've got it and find it a fantastic airbrush um, one person made the comment and it was interesting because i had thought about this because my mother-in-law has um arthritis and the 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 trigger with the pistol grip um is is quite comfortable more comfortable than traditional airbrush um, and and it had occurred to me that it's probably great for people who've got um, um, a little bit of arthritis and many many modelers of my generation and, and, and a bit older than me uh, might be experiencing some of that so uh, I was mindful of that and then someone made a comment that they they have arthritis and they find it much easier to use um, uh, airbrush with a trigger grip so um, uh, uh, we'll talk about that when we do the review but yeah the, the whole idea is um, uh, I wanted that because um, I can get a particular cap uh, fitting uh, nozzle fitting for the swallowtail that doesn't fit on any of the others which I wanted for this so we'll be having a play with that and I've got a 0.7 needle so we'll be having a play with that um, it will Put some paint down that will 0.7 um, so yeah uh, so getting this nearly done um, is exciting because I want to get the hull painted and then we will feel like we're moving forward a little bit so yeah um, that's where we got to with Sean Horst and the pictures coming up now Uh, the other thing I managed to do on the Sean Horse was put the hydrophones in. Um, so that's been done. Um, I used the Pontos template for that, which is actually the one for Bismarck, but perfectly usable for the Sean Horse. No one's going to know the, the, there is a, a tiny difference with the arrangement that I spotted when I came to fit it, but it's minor. No one's going to know. So um, we, we've gone with, with the template as it is. So that's all drilled out. I've got to do that on the other side. Um, and then the only thing left is to put in the pyrovane um, rod opening. We can build the pyrovane rod um, later on in the build, but everything else, the weld seams have gone down well. I've ended up using stretch sprue for most of them. Um, so yeah, and the rivets look awesome, and I'm sure when we get some paint down, it'll uh, it'll just tidy it up. Um, oh, I do have. Um, uh, loading scuttles to put in two of them i've got got a scratch make but i think the next time i have a session on this um we should get that done plus i'm on holiday uh next week from work from um i'm only in work uh monday tuesday wednesday so i'll be getting some more modeling time so uh, i expect by the time we get to the other side of easter that Sean Horse will probably be primed, um, if not getting some paint down. Fingers crossed, I really want to move it on and get stuck into uh, to the other stuff. Um, 
hulls on big ships, they become a bit of a, a grind. If you're making the modifications like that, uh, as much as I enjoy them, uh, they're very time consuming. Um, and, you know, I've been working at, we're nearly at the end of March and I've been working on this since just before Christmas. So that's quarter of a year on modifying the hull. If you look at it that way, that's, that's, that's quite some time. But um, I do work on it every other week, so it's only a month and a half in, in reality. Um, but still, it's a lot of work, and I understand why people don't make those corrections and build it straight from the box, because it's not for everyone. So that's where we got to with Scharnhorst. Um, other things that happened um, was, I, I talked about the tempo uh, last last time um, and said I had a vision for it on a display base which is actually over there ready for cleaning up um, and I had some figures on order and these are the figures um, so gecko figures let's get those into you um, so it's um, Scottish Highlander Piper and Infantry it says Normandy June 44 but applicable anytime I like really um, you know, as long as you bear in mind the, the uniform period, but it's applicable afterwards. So we're going to have the tempo in the foreground in a state of distress. What well, that's quite going to be, haven't decided yet. Um, and then we're going to have these figures. Now, I've not had gecko figures before, um, and that's sort of what they look like. Um, and interestingly, they come with photo etch. So we've got photo etch buckles and uh, weaponry straps and possibly some kit straps as well. Also, um, so that's good, um, better than most figures. And also we've got decals, which includes the tartan for the um, uh, pipes bag. Uh, how easy that is going to be to put on. Um, uh, it remains to be seen but if nothing else I can use it as a template for painting um, but yeah that'll be interesting but we've also got all sorts of markings um, uh, insignias lapel, lapels and um, all that sort of stuff markings so um, yeah uh, really really good so um, that's the figures for the tempo and I think that is pretty much what happened on the workbench this weekend. Now I've got to say this weekend coming up is B17 um, and I will get a little bit of time on the B17 um, but I'm not sure how much because on uh, Monday and Tuesday next week I'm having new floors fitted in the living room um, and through into the hall there. Um, so on the Monday they come in and they're leveling the floor and then on the Tuesday they're putting new wood flooring down. So um, I'm going for the same product that I put in the kitchen. Um, we use the click system in the kitchen and there's one area where um, it, it bounces a little bit and you hear a little click every now and then um, where it's just going up and down and that that bothers me a little bit so uh, we're using the same system but rather than the click version we're going for the adhesive uh, version so when we had this fitted in the kitchen we were told that um, if you damage um, damage a panel um, you can just unclick it all take it out put a new one in and, and put it all back um, whereas if it was glued you've got to lift it all and replace it all but talking to the uh, the uh, flooring company, uh, they said that's not true, uh, and that what they can do is they can heat up an individual um, plank, um, which softens the adhesive, and they can lift it out, glue another one in, and clean it all up. Um, so we're going for the the glued version this time. So um, that that will be interesting. Um, we spent ages choosing the colour, and we've ended up with a colour that's almost identical to what we've got. Um, the plank sizes will be a bit thinner, so I think it'll look better, um, and it looks more natural. Plus, what was put in was fairly cheap system by the previous owner, and um, uh, our. Our dog, as he got old, just before he passed away, uh, was weeing all over it, so it's lifted in places and swollen and stuff. So it's well overdue for, for replacement because um, Archie passed away a couple of years ago now. So um, 
yeah, we're, we're ready for, for getting rid of that and putting a, a better quality product in. And hopefully that will see us out in this house at least because um, it's got quite a long guarantee. Um, and if we look after it, it, it should last. So um, that's the, the first real step. So this weekend um, I'm lifting floors and taking beading off the um, skirting board because the, the beading was put on to cover up the um, expansion uh, points all around the edges of the wood. We don't need that with this um, flooring that's going in, so they'll be able to butt up right up to the skirting board. I've also got to put a new skirting board in, so got a busy weekend. I might get very little modeling, if any, done, to be honest. Anyway, that's where, uh, where I'm up to. So any modeling that gets done at the weekend is B17, but I will get some done in the week. So we will push it on um, forward and there will be an update the following Sunday. That takes me very nicely into what's coming up next week. Actually, before we talk about what's coming up next week, um, let's talk about the special people um, that support the channel. Um, I've had lots and lots of support over the, the last month um, with everything that was going on and we're still working through those videos. We're getting to the end, but I think there's another, at least another two weeks worth of work for me there on top of uh, maintaining, um, getting stuff out. Yes, I have had an impact on the channel. Um, my uh, viewing for, it's, <laughs> when you look at the statistics, um, it's a bit deceiving. It shows that my um, viewing times are, are up and stuff like that. But when you actually look at when you actually look at it, um, it was higher at one end of the month, and then we've had all these issues, and it's dropped quite considerably. So you, when you dig into the detail, yeah, it, it's dropped. Um, it's unfortunate. It is what it is. Um, Starting to see that slowly um, coming back, um, but it will take it will take time, um, and it probably needs the launch of um, uh, a, a new build. So the B17 build uh, might just inject a little bit more life into the viewing figures, and that's important because the more people that view a video, uh, the more people are likely to like a video. So. Um, only a small proportion of people actually hit the like button um, and that's what affects the, the algorithm so I don't know whether that's because people don't like the video um, and therefore don't hit the like button um, which would be interesting to know but there's no way of really knowing that um, uh, and then the other people are um, just not thinking about it and not thinking about the like button and just watching the video, video comes to the end and they click the next one they want to watch that comes up or something, don't know. Um, but it's very clear um, that only a small percentage of people um, like the button and that is the one of the best ways you can support the channel because if you hit like then more people who'd be interested in the video get to see it the algorithm picks it up that the video is uh, has a degree of popularity uh, and then it raises it to other people that watch similar videos so that's how it works uh, and that's how the the um the channel grows um, so uh, yeah we've got more subscribers coming in um, all the time there's there's a there's there's um, uh, the, the flow dropped and that's starting to pick up again which is which is good so to all my new subscribers thank you very much I keep all of these videos free and um, I can only um, uh, maintain that now um, by the channel being self-supporting. So the revenue that comes from the adverts is the revenue that is used for buying um, kits and tools and products for reviewing on the channel. So it's really important that um, uh, more people watch the videos because then I get more advertising revenue and that benefits you guys because I've got them more stuff to talk about and film and I can get the most recent kits as they come out and uh, and so on um, whereas yeah so it, it, it's just helpful watching the videos is helpful hitting the like button really really helpful there are some people and this hobby is full of them that really like to go a little bit further and support the channel um, and i don't do patreon i don't do 
buy me a coffee and I don't do membership. Um, partly because I've got to then do something else to warrant that, for, for, in my mind anyway. I can't say to you, here's membership and for, you, for the money that you give me once a month, once a week, however it works, you get nothing in return. I can't do that. Um, so I keep it free for everyone and if you want to donate to the channel, um, if you've seen a particular video that was helpful, whether that be a, a tool review that, that answered questions for you or I showed you a technique in a video that you wanted to then go and try or um, you just enjoyed the build and thought, you know what, that's, that's worth a pound of anyone's money, then you can donate. You can do super chat and you can do super thanks. You'll find those buttons at the bottom of those videos or in the live chat on a Friday when we've got our builds on and, and everyone's in the live chat. You can do that there and I'll get 60% of whatever you donate. So for every pound, I get 60p. Um, or you can follow the link at the bottom of this video and go to PayPal, in which case, I get 100% of it for the channel, not me personally, um, and YouTube doesn't take its 40% cut. Um, and some of you like to do that, and some of you do it on a regular basis. And uh, this week, if you do do that, I'll give you a shout out in Table Talk. So this week, I'd like to thank uh, Dominic Beeler, I think that's how you pronounce your name, uh, and Paul Model Monkey pretty much donates every week now. I'm very grateful for the donations, it's really helpful. Um, after buying the camera, I'm now starting to rebuild the pot so that we can buy some uh, kits and products and tools in the future. Um, so that's really, really helping me at the moment. I haven't been doing any buying because I want to build the, build the pot back up. Um, so yeah, that's where we're up to. Um, so thank you to you guys. Um, do consider supporting the channel. Now, someone said to me that I was missing a trick and that a lot of people do membership um, and, and don't do anything additional for it. And it was a good way of making sure you got a sustained revenue. Well, I don't know whether people would want to um, pay membership for this channel or not. I've never really explored it. Um, but I would feel a little bit obliged to do something else. If someone's going to give me a, uh, a pound every month um, uh, and that's a thank you, that's one thing. If someone's going to give me, um, you know, five pounds or ten pounds or something, then I guess you expect something back. So I prefer to, at this moment in time, I prefer to keep it as donations, I think, unless you think I'm wrong, but um, I think uh, keep it as donations and then you can donate what you can afford, when you can afford it, and when you feel you want to. Um, so I have people that donate occasionally and I have people that, that have donated on one-offs and I have people that donate um, a small amount each week. However you want to do it, it all helps the channel. So a massive thank you to everyone um, who's contributed to the, the, the channel um, so far this year. Um, it's really helped. It has really, really helped. Um, and you're starting to see the benefits like this camera. Now, I've worked out why you've not been seeing videos in 4K. And I think uh, I know how to get them into 4K. Um, but you might not see that just yet because I'm still playing around with DaVinci. Now I managed to get my old software to open up. So I'm keeping it open and trying to get some stuff through there quickly, particularly the uh, remastered videos so that um, I can get them back up, back up quickly because I know how to use it and it's much, much more simple and intuitive than DaVinci so I can, I can chuck volume out quickly. I'm still getting my head around DaVinci but it appears that in DaVinci I can change the setting, um, uh, the resolution setting and it was set at a default. So even though I was filming on the 4K camera, um, the, the default um, was reducing that down, um, which means it's quicker to upload your videos and all that sort of stuff because the files are smaller. So I can um, increase that to um, 4K, um, and I've learned that on one of the video tutorials I've been watching. So um, I'm gonna have a play with that and hopefully you'll get true 4K rather than just high definition um, soon and we'll see a difference. So um, 
yeah, so learning all the time, Da Vinci's a bit of a beast. I'm trying to, there's several sections at the bottom of Da Vinci. If you use Da Vinci, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and it's recommended that you sort of go from left to right through those sections, but actually I've been focusing on one, which is where you do all the editing, and then you can do a quick upload from there. Um, so uh, I'm sort of mastering that one, and then I'll have a look at the other one. And there's, there's things like messing around with the colors, uh, I don't, uh, I might need to do that, but it's not important that I learn that one. So I will learn another one and probably do colours last or something. I will learn them all though. So lots of progress on Da Vinci, but it'll take a little bit of time for you to, for that to filter through. And I'm doing a combination of editing in Da Vinci and editing in, um, um, I, I play, um, iMovie. So um, the Sean Horst video that you will that you will see next time has been done in DaVinci. Uh, the Beaufort video that you'll see next week has been done in iPlayer. So you're going to get a combination for a while until I fully migrate over. Right then, let's talk about what's coming up in the week ahead. So Monday, hopefully, will be the final part of the Infini Files reviews. I say hopefully, because I've not actually recorded it yet. Um, so um, what I forgot, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I've got four days to record it, edit it, and get it up. Now, like a bit of pressure. Um, so if... If I don't find time with everything that's going on this weekend, then I will swap it out for something else. What will that be? Let me have a quick look at my plan. Um, so if I don't do Infinity Sanders, um, oh, I've got a, um, a spruce stand um, that is recorded. Um, so I could probably just edit that together and pop that in. So you're going to get one of, one of those videos and I don't quite know which one yet. Um, and then uh, from there, then we've got Endeavour. Uh, no, we haven't got an, uh, another Endeavour um, because you've had that one. Uh, uh, uh. So uh, Wednesday will be the Tiger Moth. Right, okay. Back on plan. Now, the Tiger Moth has just been re-released by Airfix with uh, new decals and paint schemes. This is the original release of it as a new tool, and it's only two years old, I think, as a new tool, um, which ha had um, red and white checked um, wings. Now, I built that, and then I got another one when they were giving one away free with purchases, which I talked about at some point and then embarrassingly they stopped it after the video went out uh, or just before the video went out about it um, so uh, yeah I've got one of those we're going to do the first impressions it's the same kit so if you're thinking about the new Tiger Moth release it'll give you a real good insight into that kit and how it goes together and I've got to say it was a real joy to build I absolutely love building the Tiger Moth it was much much nicer than the Chipmunk um, so yeah that's coming up on Wednesday, um, and then Bowfighter 9, which is the last one, the final part of the Bowfighter. Um, uh, it'd be good to get that one out of the way. That's 18 weeks of, of those uh, build diaries done. Um, I never expected it to get to nine, but um, it, 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 the last minute is quite involved. You've got the turrets, you've got a, 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 a gun that you sling underneath the nose and, and some bits and pieces so um, we do all that and we finish it off and then I summarize my view of the kit um, so that's all coming up it's a bit longer than my usual videos it's about an hour and hour and ten hour and twelve um, I usually try and keep them to about an hour as, as best I can um, but as it was the last video I had to even with some some harsh editing to cut things down um, that's the best I could do and it was nearly two hours of, of final footage at the end so uh, yeah that is getting us then back to table talk um, oh there will be uh, next week there will be a B17 update how much I'll get done I don't know but I'd like to think we get the rest of the interior built up so I can take photographs um, and then uh, maybe get the two fuselage halves together don't know we will see 
Anyway, I think that's it for this week. Um, I'm moving on at a pace, but life is getting in the way one way or another. Um, I wouldn't say it's smooth running, but with my Easter holidays, that's bound to give me some more modeling time. And one of the things I'd like to try and do over the Easter holidays is finish the Queen Mary 2 so we can put the final video out. Um, I've got some stuff for, um, uh, for editing. Uh, I just need to show you how I do the, um, the photo etch, the little uh, deck chairs and stuff and paint them up and then we can do a final reveal. So I hope over the Easter holidays to finish that off. I've got some extended holidays and taking a few days either side of the long weekend. So yeah, that will be rather cool. Um, if we can get that out of the way and get it on display, I'll be a happy bunny. Um, so yeah, um, and that also means that um, we can push on um, a bit with Sean Horst and B17 over the Easter holidays um, because I, I, it's really important to me that I get some material together for the uh, B17 videos now. Um, and I'm still quite hand to mouth on the Sean Horst. Um, so I need to get paint down on this because once I've got the paint down, um, I can do the tool review on the uh, Swallowtail uh, and it means that then I'm focused on wood decks and that sort of thing. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel uh, and all the comments and stuff. It's greatly appreciated, especially those of you that comment on all the videos. Uh, 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 massive thank you to everyone that supports the channel. I love doing this, as you know, because of you guys. So you enjoy your week, enjoy your modeling, and I will see you very soon. Bye for now. Hi, and thanks for watching. You can support the channel by hitting the like button and if you haven't subscribed please consider the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any content that I put out. Model Kit Stuff is a self-funded channel and um, I don't do membership or Patreon or buy me a coffee so if you'd like to further donate to the channel and ensure the cameras keep rolling and the content keeps coming then you can consider making a donation uh, through my PayPal. You will find a link to that in the text below. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you soon.